My friends, you are looking at Liberty Skull, located on the North American continent, in the country of the United States of America, in the Commonwealth State of Pennsylvania, in the city of Pittsburgh, and in the neighborhood of Shadyside. This is the first school that I had ever gone to as a child. It's what they call an elementary school. What you're looking at didn't look quite like this about 40 some years ago, but much of it's still the same. And this exit here, we would come out when we were getting ready, ready to go home. And also, I believe they had a little bit more of a playground back then. They may actually still. And then of course they had a ball field, which is an area they still have. But uh, some things have changed. But this particular area is what I remember the most. And my mother would come after school to come and get me and walk me home. And she would bring lollipops in hopes that I would not continuously get bullied beat up and picked on at Liberty School. And this is just the first of three other, well, two other schools. There was another one, but it's closed down now. It's actually destroyed. And frankly, I'm kind of glad. Now, I will say this about what I've gone through. It made me who I am today in many ways. Hi, puppy. There's a Doberman right here. How you doing? And um, it made me what I was today. And it also made me very determined not to allow abuse and mistreatment of every, anyone, really. So that's part of why I'm an advocate and an activist. But when I was here because of my heart issue, I was told I couldn't fight. So most of my schooling years, I was beat up every single day. I mean, literally every day. But this school, I really didn't learn anything in it, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Me neither. The only thing I learned is to get abused. So I have to say something about Pittsburgh Public Schools. This is not being negative. This is not being, and the young lady said she didn't learn anything in here either. This is not to be negative. This is not to be regressing, but frankly, I learned all bad things in here. I learned that I was underestimated, I was abused, I was misinformed. Had I known I could fight back, this would never happen. Right here, I got beat up right in this, this place, right in almost any of these rooms. All these three floors, three, four floors. But I learned something. When I learned how to fight, because I could fight, well, I already knew how to fight, but I could fight. That changed everything. But you know what? There's gonna be somebody out here that's getting abused today in their school. So the ch children that are being bullied in elementary, middle, if you're being bullied in college, or I mean, you know, um, high school, even university or college, you don't have to take it. Now maybe you can't medically fight back, but you can verbally fight back. You can use your brain, not mine, but yours. And I'm here for you. Lord knows I really mean what I say. Right hand up to God for those of you who believe. I want you to call me at 412-559-2731. Don't block your number and don't make it private. I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what you've been through. Every day, literally every single day, my mom would beat me at this area here. I don't wanna go on the grounds officially because that could be trespassing and all that yada yada business. So she would come and give them lollipops or other candy. It didn't work. And for the parents out there who think that somehow, maybe you think that getting your child at school Maybe offering a few in a similar situation, candy or money or whatever, it doesn't work. They still do it. They just don't let you know. And your ch children don't let you know. There are a lot of young children 
teenagers and college age children killing themselves. Yeah, killing themselves. So if you are a bullied child or a bullied adult of any age, I want you to reach out and call me. I'm not some kind of doctor, I'm not this, that, or the other, but I am a guy who will do what he can to help you. We'll come up with an idea, we'll come up with a solution. Your life matters. Whether you're going through this stuff that I went through or not, your life matters to me. So as we go to the other schools, most likely tomorrow, I'm going to most likely edit them together. This here is Liberty School. Again, this is located on the North American continent in the United States of America, the Commonwealth State of Pennsylvania, the County of Allegheny, the City of Pittsburgh, and the neighborhood of Shadyside. And this is an upper class neighborhood, yet some of the worst abuse I ever faced right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is actually a positive video for me though. I made it through. To all of you being beat up right now, young kids, people, whatever age you are, you're gonna beat this. You don't hurt yourself. You don't make a permanent decision over a temporary situation. Hey, I made it. And Lord knows people didn't think I had a chance. I made it. You'll make it. I'm Albert Castle, and I care about you. Yeah, you, the bullied child, the bullied adult. I care about you and you and you out there and you. That's right. So let's get this taken care of because you really do matter. You know, school. It was um, the school that I had gone to after Liberty School. Why they sent me here, I have no idea. I'm not sure if it's because I was having so many problems getting beat up in Liberty. Nobody ever told me or my, as far as I know, my parents. But this was called Friendship. And now, how do you pronounce it, Annette? Montessori. It's Pittsburgh Montessori School in the Friendship area. And again, it used to be called Friendship School. I'm deliberately not showing much because you can hear voices and there's children and parents. But this is yet another stop on the abuse tour. And of course, earlier I showed a different school, but we will edit this in a different way. Now, I would like to show you a little bit more, but because of the tree, and by the way, I love nature, so I'm glad the tree's here. At least that's a good thing. It's beautiful, actually. Some people say, ah, it's just a tree, but trust me, every tree is beautiful. Every mind is a genius, every tree is beautiful, to an extent. And this is some of these places here, right in these lots, you know, basketball court, uh, recreation, whatever it's used for now, and I'm not really paying much attention. I'm gonna focus it on me now. In every one of these areas, Every part of this school, no matter where I was, I was beat up. I was either teased or I was physically beat up and teased. And by every, just about everybody you can imagine, every kid, and both in, in Liberty School, Friendship, which is now, how do you pronounce that again? Montessori. Pittsburgh Montessori School. Reisenstein Middle School, which I'm glad it was torn down, doesn't even exist, and I'm glad, I am glad. And of course, Peabody High School, which is now Obama Academy. Each of these schools allowed me to be abused physically. And then the school system itself also abused me. And you know, I was, just before I got on here, I was, I was thinking, Am I over this? It's been what? 40, 50, well not 50 years, but 40, maybe 43 years. I don't know what it was. Of course, in the, in the um, high school, it was only what, about 30 something. But am I over it? And you know, it's so many things have happened in my life. Yes, I've lived, I've survived. I've actually thrived. But you know, even today, 
I look at this skull, Liberty, and Peabody, and I think the teachers, the principal, the vice principal, the so-called counselors, all of these people systematically allowed myself to be abused. And what really comes to mind is no wonder, and I hate to say this, no wonder there's school killings. No wonder there's kids stabbing people today, kids shooting people and calling by. No, of course it's not right, but I understand it. I understand it because it's the fault of the schools. It's called as it is. It's the fault of the parents to some degree. Yes, to some degree. But I believe it's the school's fault more. And I'll say why. When I was in Peabody, my mother brought it to the attention of teachers, principals, well, vice principal and principal. And each school, this one here, Reisenstein and Peabody. Well, she wasn't involved with the Peabody, not really in theory. But in all those situations, nothing was done. And I was physically abused every single day. And I want you to close your eyes for a minute. I want you to imagine your child with a serious heart ailment. And you're told that if you get into a fight, you literally can die. So you're faced with a choice every single day. Get beat up, get harassed, get picked on, lose out in an education, or finally kick somebody's you-know-what. What kind of a choice is that? You know there are millions of children and teenagers throughout this country, the United States, and I'm sure around the globe, but in America we know for a fact, considering killing themselves or their classmates at all levels, even college. Bullying is horrendous, dangerous, deadly even. Columbine and others show that. But the ineffectiveness and the outright non-caring of teachers, of principals, and of administrators, and of boards of directors, it is an abomination. That's, I use that word many times in many videos for many different reasons. But that's what it is. You know, excuse me. If you have a medical problem and you can't fight, you shouldn't lose out on your education. You shouldn't then be labeled as something that you are not. Yet I have been and many others have been. What about the fact that there are children right now, maybe even your child, and you may not even know, being bullied, being beat up. My mother would bring candy of all kinds of lollipops and Everything she tried failed. So what was the solution of Pittsburgh Public Schools? The solution was to send me away and, and do it in a very dishonest, unethical, and lying and deceitful way. Claiming that my mother was abusing me because she didn't send me to school. So let me ask you this question. If your child had been stabbed with a fork, had a blackened eye, had been beaten up every single day, and the principals did nothing, not did, any, did not do anything. If no one, including the vice principals, or the counselors, or the teachers, or the, the gym teachers, did not anything at all, and then because of my physical condition, when I would be in phys ed or gym, my own teachers would harass me. Many times in class because how could I know anything when I was worried every day of being beat up? So they labeled me and they abused me also. All of this all happened in Peabody, in friendship, in liberty, and in Reisenstein. Well, Reis actually, it would be liberty, friendship, Reisenstein, and Peabody. And twice I was abused, 
two different times, two different enrollments with Peabody High School in different ways. What would you do if that were your child? What if he is your child? He, she your, is your child. Yes, even today, even though I've reached these heights and will reach more, I worry. I, first of all, I'm, there's still an element of anger. I'm not going to lie. Definitely. Yes, there's still an element of anger. I lost out in the childhood. I was actually mislabeled with my intelligence. But who would go to school or know how to answer questions when you had to worry about getting physically hurt? I didn't know what the math questions or the science or any of that was. I was just trying not to be killed or hurt. And when you're a child, you don't know the difference at first. But my concern today in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and for the next 10 million years, is your children, are your children. The abuse, the, the murders, the suicides, all of it is connected. And there are many, 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 many to blame. Some, some parents, yes. But I blame the mental health system, I blame the schools, I blame the universities, all of them. Because a lot of times they become aware of it and do nothing. Maybe they throw their hands up because they can't figure out how to do something. But that is not the answer. I don't know about you. But I really am concerned about suicides and homicides. You know, I think about what was done to me in Liberty School and in this school. And in Reisenstein and Peabody. And I could have easily been one of those statistics. There were days when I wanted to take somebody out. Yes, there were. When I got stabbed, I wanted to stab somebody. I mean, after all, I was stabbed in the back and I had a fork in my mouth, I was eating lunch. And do you know not one teacher that was in the room did anything about it? As a matter of fact, when I was back in Peabody the second time, Eight children or students was picking on this gentleman, or not gentleman, but boy that was from the Asian nation, one of the Asian nations. And they were a bunch of idiots, frankly. I mean, everybody matters because humanity matters, but they were idiots and they were abusive and they were mean. And so eight of them was harassing this child, this student. And I was sitting with him and every day they would attack him. And he didn't want to start anything because of his situation. So one day, I happened to have my coat touching their table. So then they started in with me. But had they known who I was back then, they might not have tried. See, because by that time, I wasn't physically worried about the heart. I'm not going to say I'm some kind of a Superman, but I wasn't playing so you want to know what happened? I stood up to all eight of these punks. That's what they were. That's what they are. I hope they've changed. I don't know if they're alive or dead, but if they are alive, I hope they changed. But they were punks. So when I stood up to them, all of a sudden the teachers came at me. They defended them and came at me. And you know what I said to them? Words I won't repeat here, but I said, Mother, you know what? You better sit your, you know what? Yes, I said the A word. Oh, I actually said these words. Because I will have you arrested if you don't shut the F up. All the time, I was being abused. You did nothing. You're going to say something? Shut the F up and get the F out of my face before I F you up. Yes, I did go there. And they threatened to put me in jail and all that fun stuff. I said, listen, one word gets out of what you've been doing to me, and you'll be under the prison. So they backed off. As far as those eight chumps, you know what I said to them? This is a fact. I said, that's okay. I'll take all you MFers on. Well, one of you are going to die, maybe two of them. Yes, I said it just like that. I said, because you mofos volunteer because one of you or both of you are going to die. So as far as I'm concerned, I may die, but two, at least one or two of you are going to die. So eight against one. And guess what happened? 
they back down. Just like these phony teachers back down, they back down. You know why they back down? I'll tell you why. Here's the real reason. They knew I was right. And as far as the chums and the punks, I stood up for them. But more importantly, they knew I was serious. See, at that point, and I'll share this with you. I, yes, I'm a humanitarian today and all that, and I love people. But even today, if my life is at risk, the only thing I can tell you is you better watch yourself. I don't say that as a threat. It's called self-preservation. preservation, And I can tell you, I was ready that day. And I was not taking any prisoners. They also didn't know that I had been in the homes in the interim. So I knew a little something, something. I won't say what I knew. But they better be very glad to this day that they did not chance it because honestly, between you, me, and the world, I guess I can tell you it's been like 30 years or whatever. <laughs> what they didn't know is it would have been a lot more than just two of them. Probably at least most of them would have been seriously injured. You see, when I was in those homes, there was an initiation. So I actually actually was attacked by 16 of my roommates, all 16, when I first arrived in Zillianople. Oh, yeah. And by the way, even the staff parents have got their act in now. Yeah, they should have been around. This is a continuation. I don't care how long it is. You watch, you watch, you don't, you don't. I love you, but I'm going to call it as I see them. This is the abuse tapes or the abuse matter. So when I was in Zillianople at Lutheran, Lutheran Children's Home, Oh my goodness, I actually named names. Told y'all I don't play. If you ain't doing right, get ready to say goodnight. Legally, peacefully, ethically, and financially. And even if it's in the past, I tell the truth. So I was in Lutheran Children's Home, and I was at Manor Cottage. Yeah, how y'all doing if y'all remember me? And um, it's now called something else. Lutheran Family Services or something. Might have recently closed down. I don't know. So I arrived there in 16. There was a 17 when I got there. I was the 17th, you know, resident. So I get there, and they hit me everywhere. And that was actually the first time ever that I had been hit. I was hitting my chest where I was told I could be killed. I was hitting every place. And I mean every place, including where you go to the restroom and procreate. Yes, every place. Okay, not to be gross, but the other parts of that, too. And here I was in extreme pain, getting beat up. And I started smiling, laughing, and having a good time while I was getting beat up. And everybody was like, what the F? And they were saying the words, obviously. And even the staff was like, what the hell? Excuse my language. What's wrong with this dude? Is he crazy? And finally... I started getting that them. And out of those 16, I'd say a good seven or eight got slammed. And ultimately, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't really tell you this, but over the course of six weeks or so or less, every one of them, including a certain somebody. What was that? I don't know, somebody hit something. Including a certain somebody got dealt with. What the heck was that? Yep, that's what it was called, Friendship School. What's the stupid name? Montessori. Now it's called Montessori. Located in the neighborhood of Friendship. Oh, wait a minute, let me get that right. Yeah, that was Friendship School back in the day. I got abused there, and today they just threw a rock at my, somebody threw a rock, even today, how stupid that is. Threw a rock at of my car, apparently. But I'm still here. At any rate. At any rate. Let me just say a couple things real quickly. That school is located in the continent of North America. The country of the United States of America. 
It's in the Commonwealth state of Pennsylvania. It's in the county of Allegheny, in the city of Pittsburgh, and the neighborhood is Friendship, very close to Bloomfield. They abused me then. They're not abusing me now. Anybody attacks my car again, I will call the police. But I also would defend myself. And I don't mind telling the world. I'm tired of it. Frankly, I am a humanitarian. But they're not going to do this to me again because this is not the same guy they think I was. But getting back to the business at hand, sorry about that. You know, there's a lot of reasons for a lot of stuff that's going down. And teachers are guilty. And this place was guilty as sin. But I want you to understand something. We need to save the lives of the children that's been bullied. And I was t talking to you about how when I was in Lutheran Children's Home, how I got beat up. Well, well within about six weeks. Yeah, I got everybody. I got everybody back for attacking me. Every single one, including the staff. And at one point, the staff threatened them to get me in trouble. I said, really? You see, I've always been at, after I, excuse me, quite frankly, after I learned that I couldn't die from getting into a fight, I turned into the guy that wasn't going to take it. And I'm still today not going to take it. I became an advocate, but I also became a bad mama. I mean, shut How's that go? A bad mother. Shut your mouth, or however it goes. I forget how it goes. He's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Yeah, something like that from Shaft. At any rate, I'm one of the toughest hombres you'll ever meet. Mentally here legally, peacefully, and ethically. So if these chumps go and attack my car again, <laughs> I'll call the police. But they come a little bit closer. How y'all doing? That's all I'll say. I believe in self-defense. Oh, yeah. I believe in self-defense. That said, ultimately, when I did my second stint at Peabody High School, somebody had robbed me prior, during the time I was there before. And well, we'll just say that the second time, apparently he must have failed or I don't know. He was still there, so he tried it again. He didn't do it. As a matter of fact, ultimately, I'll be honest with you what happened. I ended up, let's just say, commandeering his money. I also told him that I'm not the same mofo you thought I was. In fact, if I ever see you bullying anybody ever again, I will take you down. Yes, I look, that was before I was a humanitarian. I told him, I said, I will kill you. I told him outright to his face. So I'll take your ass out. Excuse my language. Sorry, Father God and Jesus. I said, I will take your A out. And if I go to prison, I'll just call it self-defense because that's what it will be. And I told him, I said, you just don't know what I've been through. And Mother Effa, you are going to give me your money. You are going to stay as far away from me as you ever can. And if I see you bullying one person, I will rip you to shreds. Make no mistake, I will literally rip you to shreds. Okay? Now, here's what actually happened, though. I think you'll like this part. I seen him in the hallway about maybe a month or so after that. He was scared to death of me. He thought I was going to beat his you-know-what. And I seen him. And I went up to him. <laughs> Talk about scared. This dude had gone from Superman bully to kryptonite coward. Those of you who know Superman, you'd understand. And he was terrified. He thought I was gonna beat his, you know what? And by that time, the school had heard about what I had done and even some of the teachers, and they were like, I'd stay away from that mofo after that. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, it, was, it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is what it is, okay? But at any rate, so he's scared to death. I go up to him, I said, listen, I got something for you. 
And he's like, I didn't do anything. I, didn't. I said, no, just shut up and listen. And I told him, I said, look, there's a truce. I've been watching every now and then and hearing stuff. You've been pretty cool. So I'll tell you what. Not only will I not do anything to you, but if you keep being this way and being a nice guy, you and I can be friends. And since you used to have that toughness in you, you can utilize that to help others. Deal or not. I didn't do the, how he thinks, how he meant that thing. I said, deal or not. He's like, deal, man. He shook hands. And we became friends. Yes, the guy that robbed me back in the day and I went home, threatened to take out. We became very good friends. And, and we, you know, in a way, we kind of looked out for people, you know? Maybe that was the genesis of me becoming more of a humanitarian. I don't know. Here's what I do know, though. Yes, if somebody attacked me, I'd take them down. Self-defense. I love people. I love everybody. But I don't go for abuse, and I don't go for being attacked, and I don't go for you being hurt. You see, I'm for real. No, I'm not physically a Superman. No, I'm not Mr. Mar Mr. Martial Artist. But the thing about me is I believe in self-defense, and I do go into a different mode. I can't even explain it. You try to hurt me or my family, well, I wouldn't want to be you. That's not threatening anyone. That's being honest, my friends. But see, 99% of me would call the police first. What I would do is I would dial my 911 and do my best to not have a confrontation. But if I had to, I would defend my life and Annette. And you could ask Annette, there have been cases in the past where I had to defend this. Oh, I us. have something to say. I don't appreciate the way you oh, treated my boyfriend. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get her on camera. She's and that pissed. goes for the adults especially who should know better. If you, if he were my mother's son, you just wouldn't have stood a chance. You just would have paid dearly for your actions and <laughs> your pissed, neglect. Huh? Yes, I am. Well, I guess you it would makes be. Makes me sick to hear this. Well, you think that's bad? You should see what they had done. You know what they did to me in, in gym class? Please. They would publicly embarrass me. They almost had me have a heart attack. I don't know how many times because they would make me run. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. That's why you couldn't pay me all the money in the You're universe. You're lucky you didn't do it to me. Take your glasses off. Let them know you ain't playing. You are lucky you didn't do it to me because my mother never would have stood for that kind of treatment of me. Well, my mother didn't try to either, but they kept dogging her. Yeah, I know, but my mother was... You have tough. anything else to say? I'm glad my boyfriend The people survived. that did this will never see this, probably. I'm glad my boyfriend survived this. <laughs> that and much of my dad get killed at 12 years old didn't help. Yeah, well... And that didn't help either, did it? No. And they let him get away with it, but hey, forget about it. At any rate, we're here today. What can you say positive in a nice well, I love way? Al, and I'm sorry he went through this, and I feel really bad about it, and it just angers me to the core. Well, what angers me is that there are a lot of Al's out there right now that has never been like me. Yeah. There's a lot of Al's that will never not be bullied. There's a lot of Al's that will never become the tough guy that I became. The mentally tough, the legally, peacefully, ethically, and intelligently, and financially tough. What about those kids? What about those kids that get beat up and maybe even killed, unfortunately? What about in America? What about our world? You know, they matter, you know. Even my evil people that did all this, had done all this evil to me, they matter to somebody. But I swear to you, as God is my witness. If all the money in the universe was given to me for me to recommend any of these Pittsburgh schools, even though apparently they've improved greatly, you couldn't give me all the money in the universe, even today. That will conclude this abuse, abuse tour. But let me tell you something. Yes, I love humanity. Yes, you matter. Yes, there's genius in you. But for those of you out there being tormented, I really want you to contact me. I can't stop the abuse, per se. 
Then again, maybe I can. I'm not going to tell you how. But I'll give you one little clue. You see it on the news I'm a TV today, guy, right? I'm a TV it. guy, right? You think I won't use everything not in here? Legally, peacefully, ethically, financially? You think I won't contact somebody that can do what they need to do? Asking that what I'm doing on Monday with regards to being abused by a certain government agency. What am I doing on Monday, Annette? Contacting Congress. <laughs> That's right, Congress. You mess with the wrong son of a gun. Oh, yeah, baby. Yo, I'll mess with this. Legally, ethically, peacefully, psychologically. And for the, all the bullies out there, quit being a bully. You have genius in you. Be kind, be compassionate, and be loving. This is another school that I had gone to. It was called Peabody High School when I had gone there. Now it's called Obama Academy. When I went there, I got abused the first time I was there, physically, for a little bit, a little bit. But mainly, I got abused by the system. Because at that point, I had been scheduled to graduate, and they made me go through, uh, I think it was, um, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, all at one time, even though I should have been graduated. And then I had a couple of years, about three, maybe four years, where I was away again. So I come back, once again, I was graduated. And they come here and did the same exact thing. So I left, and I quit school. Now the irony of it all is, when I quit school, I actually was on the honor roll. But I didn't quit quit. What I actually did was I quit by just not going. So they felt the need to just go from A's to all E's. With regards to every Pittsburgh public school, you could not pay me all the money in all the universes combined to send my children to these schools. I would never and will never ever go to these schools. Whether they've changed, whether they're great now or not, just the sheer memory, just the sheer abuse keeps me from going. This is Alter Katzer signing off.